At first sight, you wouldn't know how dangerous it is to walk around here. People are friendly, it's peaceful, and there's plenty to eat. The rain at this time of year means there's enough water in the ground to start planting. But the rain brings with it a killer, the most dangerous animal in the world, the mosquito. More than half a million in Africa will die from malaria every year, most of them children under five. I have been through it as a kid. My kids also have been through it. All the scientists that you can see somewhere here in Africa and mostly in Burkina Faso, they have all been through it. The only weapon the scientists have against the mosquito is bed nets, because malarial mosquitoes bite at night. But now the mosquitoes are fighting back. They're changing their behavior and biting earlier in the day and outside. This is really scary. The mosquitoes are literally slipping the net by biting outdoors. And we've urgently got to find a way to kill them. I'm in Burkina Faso, where scientists are testing a new weapon in the fight against malaria, an outdoor trap to catch mosquitoes before they bite. In a small clinic in a village called Samuso, Dr. Diabate and his team are preparing for the rainy season. That's when the mosquitoes start breeding and cases of malaria go up. Old people, children and pregnant women are the most vulnerable to malaria, which can kill in a matter of hours if it isn't treated. Particularly children, how many are affected in this area? Dr. Diabate runs his clinic seven days a week. This is Sunday. He always has patients with malaria and explains the limited medications he has to treat it. The symptoms of malaria are sweating, feeling shaky and a shortness of breath. Even with treatment, it can take several days or even weeks to recover. There is no vaccine. Bed nets are the only weapon doctors have to prevent malaria, as they can stop mosquitoes biting at night. Dr. Diabate tells his patients how to use them and gives them to pregnant women and children for free. Everyone else is advised to buy their own. It's a daily battle against an insect a few millimeters long, and one Dr. Diabate fears he may be losing. Testing is done by taking a small sample of blood from the finger. Luckily, this little girl's blood result was negative. Ten-year-old Solomon wasn't so lucky. Bonjour. He's now taking anti-malarial tablets and they seem to be working. But his doctor is worried about his overall health because this is the third time Solomon has had malaria. It's really a very big problem. You will see that it's most of the workload of the health personnel. So during the rainy season, maybe 90% or more than 90% will have malaria. Living with malaria is frightening. Almost the entire workforce in this region will get sick at some time during the rainy season. Most of Burkina Faso is rural and most people work on the land. If people are ill with malaria, they can't work. And during the rainy season, people are regularly bitten by mosquitoes up to a hundred times a night. 
Bed nets have halved the number of deaths from malaria over the past 15 years and more people than ever are using them. But scientists here are worried. They've found that some mosquitoes are adapting their behaviour and biting people earlier in the evening and outside. To look at mosquitoes' behaviour... Dr Abdoulaye Diabate has been researching the behaviour of mosquitoes that carry malaria, where they breed, which insecticides are safe to use, and when and where they are biting. He says the change in behaviour is shocking. If you try to collect mosquitoes, I mean hourly, from 6 in the evening to 6 in the morning, you will clearly see that a lot of mosquitoes now are biting outdoor when people are not in bed yet. When you started to find that out, yeah. <laughs> what did you feel? Yeah, well, I was like um, a little bit uh, sorry for myself, I would say, uh, because I was saying, well, okay, here we have really very incredible tools to work inside, but we haven't really thought about the outside. So as a scientist, then you have to ask yourself, what can we do? One of the cases that has caused concern is a baby boy called Fatoa, who died after being bitten by a mosquito during the day. I'm here to meet his mother, Awa, Hello. who told me all her children sleep under a bed net. Fatoa caught malaria after being bitten by a mosquito while he was sitting outside, and a few days later, he died. <laughs> Awa also had malaria herself when she was pregnant with her first child. When I asked Awa and her family who else had had malaria, all of them raised their hands. Uh. <laughs> and you? Oh dear. <laughs> Nearly everyone around here has malaria at some time in their lives. And for adults and older children, it's like a very bad case of flu. But treating malaria is no longer enough. Now that scientists know that mosquitoes are biting earlier in the evening, they need to find a way of catching them outside and killing them. Professor Gabriella Gibson has been studying mosquito behaviour and ways to prevent malaria for more than 20 years, and she's worried. If scientists can't find a way to catch mosquitoes outside, malaria could again become pandemic. This is really scary. This means that the mosquitoes are literally slipping the net by biting outdoors, and we've urgently got to find a way to kill them before they bite people. It took us a good 10 years to get this close to reducing malaria. Time is running out. Professor Gibson and her team are working with scientists in Burkina Faso to build a trap to catch mosquitoes before they have a chance to bite people. The leading scientist is Professor Dabire. He's identified a specific type of mosquito that he wants Professor Gibson to work with. So she's taking some mosquito eggs back to the University of Greenwich. To improve our collaboration, you have to, to take some uh, mosquito eggs here and uh, to go to the, your laboratory with the egg and uh, to build a colony yes. from which you, you, you have to, yeah. to, uh, to build some uh, tra trapping system and uh, probably yeah. return us for... for and the make ones. sure it's specifically good yeah. for the yeah. mosquitoes you have here. Yeah. Professor Gibson is building a colony of Anopheles gambi, a breed of mosquito that carries the malaria parasite. She knows they are attracted by the smell of a person, so she's going to design a human smelling trap. But first she has to feed them by allowing them to bite her. Professor Gibson, known as gay to her colleagues, is collecting the mosquitoes by sucking them up into a tube where a gauze prevents them going into her mouth. She then transfers them into a small cage where we can film her giving them their blood meal. She doesn't have malaria, 
so there's no chance of anyone getting it here. I just have to roll up my sleeves, put my arm in the cage, and the important chemical that comes from us is carbon dioxide. It's something which kind of activates, it really alerts the mosquitoes that there's a, a host nearby. So to get them a little bit interested, I might just gently blow on the cage like that. And then within two or three minutes, um, if we watch, I can just feel the hairs being tickled. So a female's landed on me already. Um, I feel a little pinprick as she goes in, but I'm not particularly sensitive to the bites of these mosquitoes. So it's not as heroic as it might sound that I feed them off my own blood. It's only the females that bite. The males are harmless to people. Um, the reason that they bite is they do need our blood. They, they suck their blood, but they don't need it for nutrition for themselves. They need all the proteins and other, chem and other components of the blood in order to produce their eggs. So what exactly is she doing now um, on your arm? She has a, what's called the proboscis. It's a piece, part of their mouth parts, which is like a hypodermic needle, and it just pierces the skin. Um, and then she probes around a little bit to find a nice capillary that she can um, suck the blood from. Um, she does inject some of her own saliva so that the blood doesn't start coagulating, which is the stage at which if she was infected with a parasite, she would be pushing those parasites into the person's bloodstream. But once she's done that, then she starts sucking the blood and pulls the blood into her abdomen. Um, where it becomes digested and, and helps to produce the, the eggs. Scientists have established that mosquitoes follow the smell of people to find them and bite them. So they're building a trap using an object that smells like a person. So mosquitoes will land on it and get caught. No artificial smells have worked. So they need to find a way to get real human smell onto the object to make the trap. Gay is standing behind a net in a wind tunnel so the mosquitoes can't get to her and her odour is blown into this box containing the trap. In this experiment the trap is a barrel with sticky plastic round it to catch the mosquitoes when they land. OK Gay, you ready? Yeah. OK, lights off. The odour from Gay's body is blown onto it. Then the mosquitoes are released. We really just want to focus on using the smell of a person, so there'll be an odour plume coming from Gay's body composed of skin volatile, so chemicals coming from her skin, carbon dioxide from her breath, and we want to use that smell um, and stop them before they get all the way to Gay and see if we can deviate them to land on our sticky trap before they follow her to, all the way up to her body. The series of experiments in the lab simulate what the mosquito will smell and see in the wild. Fairy lights are the closest thing to the brightness of stars and squares inside the cage represent objects mosquitoes might see on the ground as they fly towards the odour they are following. The scientists film the mosquitoes as they are flying around and map their behaviour in an animation to see what sort of trap is most attractive to them. They've tried angular shapes, flat objects, should it be big or small, in the end, the object that best fooled the mosquito into thinking it was a person turned out to be round and dark. And the all-important question, of course, are the mosquitoes landing on the trap? Yeah, so in our sticky trap, it's just a, a barrel that's been painted black and has sticky plastic attached to it. And we can find that actually about 25 to 30% of mosquitoes that will be released in here will actually land on our sticky trap. The next step is to test the trap in the field to see if it's effective enough to act as a decoy and stop mosquitoes biting people. I'm travelling to Bama, a small village in central Burkina Faso where getting malaria is part of everyday life. The fields where the mosquitoes breed are right next to the village and the houses where people live. 
The pools of fresh water make it the perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. And this is where Dr. Hawkes and her team have been testing the new mosquito trap. This time, someone inside a tent has their odor sent down a tube to the lure or trap, just like the experiment with the wind tunnel in Greenwich. Okay, so this is the cylinder and you're putting it down next to the pipe. Exactly, so the odor from the tent, just someone sleeping in the tent will come down the tube and then surround the trap. And it's the odor that will attract the mosquitoes from distance. Then the actual silhouette of the trap will cause the mosquito to land on the sticky plastic. And now you're going to get into the tent for us. Okay, it's a bomb. Okay, so he's going to stay in there all night? Yeah, from 6 o'clock in the evening until 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and that's when the mosquitoes are most active. So Francis, the idea then is that you'll catch as many mosquitoes or maybe even more mosquitoes than a human being overnight. And then you can use your trap as a decoy. Exactly. So you and I sitting out on a night might attract some mosquitoes, whereas our sticky trap, when we come back in the morning, may have caught even more than would have been attracted to us. And as a control, we have these people sitting out here. That's right, they're going to be staying out overnight and collecting the mosquitoes that land on them. And everything about those people screams, I'm a, I'm a human, I'm a human, come and bite me. So the mosquitoes will be using those cues, how they look, how they smell, to come and be attracted to them. And we're going to incorporate all of those elements into this trap here. So hopefully when we come back in the morning to collect this sticky trap and what these guys have collected overnight, they should be fairly similar. Here they are, hello. hello. Nice to see you. And you've caught some already, is that good? Yeah, so it's just after six o'clock in the evening and we've already got some Anopheles gambi and they're one of the main malaria mosquitoes that we're interested in studying. The scientists staying out all night are expert at identifying which mosquitoes to catch. They painstakingly collect them by hand and store them in test tubes. The skill is to catch the mosquitoes before they bite. The scientists know their human smell will be attracting mosquitoes. The question is, can the artificial trap do the same? Morning, Francis. Morning, Judy. <laughs> You're up early. How's it going? Yeah, well, thank you. We've got the sticky trap results and it's performed quite well. Um, we're going to have a look now and see how many Simon managed to catch last night. OK, so Simon, how many did you get? I, I have uh, got 10 mosquitoes. 10, and you? Uh, and our sticky trap managed to get 15, so at the moment it looks like it's doing a little bit better than Simon managed to do. This is an important breakthrough. It's the first time any scientist in the world has managed to catch mosquitoes outside using a decoy. Now the science needs more testing before the results can be published. Now you've got a catching mechanism, what are you going to do with it? Well, we're using this sticky trap to check that the mosquitoes are actually contacting our trap. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to develop this trap further and begin perhaps incorporating an insecticide or some sort of growth inhibitor that stops mosquitoes from developing further. And Gay, once you have perfected this trap, how are you going to use it? Well, once we're sure that it's really a robust killing trap and it's going to kill the mosquitoes that come and land on it, then it's a matter of optimising it so that it's the best size, the best shape, bring in as many possible mosquitoes. So would each hut have its own trap? That would certainly be a good starting point and get people um, used to having that trap there and seeing that it actually is catching mosquitoes. There is another twist to this story. Persuading people that malaria is caused by a parasite carried by mosquitoes is a challenge. People here have been living with malaria for decades and as most people get ill during the rainy season, urban myths are rife. One common belief is that fresh corn gives you malaria or cooking with corn oil. The fact that malaria is caused by a mosquito biting an infected person and then passing the infection on to others is proving hard to explain. So how difficult is it to persuade people of the dangers of mosquitoes? Yeah, well, okay, people are really aware of malaria, but unfortunately, year back, if you went, uh, if you went uh, through the population and then you have this discussion with the population, unfortunately, a lot of them will not make a direct link between mosquitoes and then the disease. So some of them will just even tell you that uh, you can get the malaria from other sources than mosquitoes. 
The government of Burkina Faso has initiated a publicity campaign, making it clear that malaria is caused by mosquitoes and nothing else. They are also supporting the scientists in getting that message across. But the scientists are now urgently asking for more help. In a recent visit to the testing center, the Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Jean-Noël Poda, was shown developments in new insecticides. The scientists also need more support to develop the outside trap. The visit from the minister is really important for the scientists here. Not only is it a public show of support for the work they're doing, but they also hope it will bring them more money, government money, for research. D'abord, l'État met un effort sur le personnel, rassurer le recrutement permanent du jeune personnel pour que y ait la relève, y ait la continuation. La ressource humaine est très très importante pour que euh, le partenariat nord-sud, sud-sud puisse compléter le reste. Donc l'État fait un effort en matière de ressources humaines. After coming so close to finding an answer to eradicating malaria in the use of the bed net, it's frustrating for scientists that in many ways they're starting all over again. They know more about how the mosquito behaves now and it looks like they'll find an outside trap that works. But it is increasingly difficult to stay ahead of an insect that is so good at changing its behavior. And there is a sense of urgency. Scientists both inside and outside Africa know there is no silver bullet. If they are to get rid of the malaria parasite, they have to find a multitude of ways to destroy the mosquito that carries it. So it's really extremely important for us to go beyond the bed net and come with new solution. And this cannot be done if we don't have a clear understanding of mosquitoes' behavior so that we can have clear phenotype that will help us to design new intervention and new tools. And how long will it take? I'm hopeful that it will come really sometime soon. If we can really focus also on building up you know, this uh, uh, capacity in Africa, making sure that the Africans really own the science, that will really help us, you know, to, to, to boost the malaria out of Africa. Mm -hmm.